Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the Ford Type Make It Loco channel. Today we're gonna show you how to change the PTU fluid on 2020 and newer Ford Escape. So of course 2020 is the next generation Escape and there's a lot of improvements on it. And the biggest one being for us is serviceability. So the PTU is bolted to the side of the transaxle. It's right in this general area right here. So of course we need to jack the vehicle up. We need to pull off this cover and then we can get to it. The great part about it is that it has a, both a fill and a drain plug on there, which is great, really easy to service. I would service these every 30,000 miles. Let's get started. First things first, you wanna jack your vehicle up so you can get it underneath here. It's gonna be tight. So you wanna jack it up, get it on some jack stands at all four corners so the vehicle is level for filling it up. So right here is a, a, a jacking point, right here, right here and then right here, right here on the pinch weld. If you're unsure, make sure you check your owner's manual. It will tell you in there exactly where the jacking points are in your vehicle. So get it up on four jack stands so the vehicle's nice and level, and then we could go ahead and start taking down this shield right here so you have access to the PTU. All right, let's get after it. If I didn't mention it already, this procedure is specific to 2020 and newer uh, Ford Escape PTUs, okay? They're totally different, different fluid, different procedure, everything, okay? So let's go ahead and pull a shield off right here. It looks like they're using seven mil screws instead of the T30s now. That's a welcome change. And so far I see metal uh, nuts on there. Yeah, instead of the plastic. That's another real nice surprise. On the older ones, these bolts used to just spin and these shields would fall off all the time. The other thing I noticed is right here coming in, there's a scoop right here just for the PTU to keep it cool. Built right into the shield on here, direct that airflow. There's a bunch of them you know, all over the place, but they're regular seven mil screws. You know, a seven millimeter head on there. One right here. And it has little hooks in the front here, so it doesn't fall on your head. And it looks like at this point, it's ready to go. So you just have to kind of pull it down a little bit and back. It'll unhook and pull it forward and unhook from back here. All right. Quick note here, this procedure only applies to air-cooled PTUs. If you have a coolant-cooled PTU, procedure is basically the same, except you need to pull the cooler off there to gain access to drain the unit out of there. So looking underneath the vehicle here, we have the engine oil pan and the transmission. And back behind it, tucked up in here, is the PTU. You can see this whole unit from here all the way over is the PTU. So it's much bigger than it was in the past. And the reason being is they've now added this gearbox section with the drive motor and shift fork. It looks a little something like this inside of there. Shift fork, we have the motor, the gears, and the shift fork here to actually separate the rear drive shaft. So when all wheel drive is not needed, it simply disconnects right here at the PTU and the rear drive shaft doesn't no longer spins until it's called for. So you increase fuel efficiency that way. Either way, the procedure to service this PTU is very, very simple. Got a drain plug right here, nice big hole on it. So it's a 3H drive for your ratchet. And then up inside of here, you can see right here is the fill plug. And it's an eight millimeter hex. So that hex looks something like this. So make sure you have an eight millimeter uh, Allen wrench on hand or hex socket like this before you get started. Once you have that, we can go ahead, get our drain pan, pan ready and start draining it out. Once you get an inconsistent drip like this or a very thin stream coming out of there, we're good to go. We can go ahead and button it back up and install the drain plug. So again, make sure your drain plug is good to go. Magnets cleaned off on there. Seal is good to go. No damage to it. And we can go ahead and reinstall it on there. So what I'll do is I'll go in, stick my finger in the threads here, clean the threads, and of course the mating surface on here. This plug requires no sealant on it. It has the gasket built into it. Get it nice and clean. I'll spin it on by hand. 
So you can snug it up. And the, the torque spec on here is 30 foot pounds, okay? So what you can do is just use, use a 3 8 like this. Hopefully you can see it, yeah. And just simply choke up on it. Come up to the center here, the point of the rotation, instead of out here, and you get rid of your, your leverage, okay? So you do initial tightening on it. Okay, we hit it, we're snug. And then a little bit more, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and torque mine to 30, and we'll see how close we are to it. Right there, you know? So it's right there, doing it by hand. So let's make sure it's good to go, and then come to this side over here, and we can start filling it up. Moving on, let's go ahead and fill the PTU back up. Now, filling the PTU is just as easy as draining it. You want to make sure you have the Motorcraft 75W85 fluid on hand. It should take one quart or less, okay? Also, make sure you have a hand pump like this on hand so you can fill it back up. We're simply going to fill it through the fill plug on here on the side of the PTU. You can see it right there. We're going to fill it until it starts streaming out of here. And then we're just going to let it sit for a while and level out to the bottom of the threads. And then we're going to install the fill plug, okay? So you can get to it from down below here really easy or also through the opening right here in the wheel well. You can see it right there. It's very easy to access. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start pumping the fluid in there until it starts pouring out. All right, I have the pump attached to the bottle. And I'm just coming in right here next to the uh, half shaft here to get my nozzle inside of there there we go and we should be able to start pumping up this point it's probably the longest part of the job it's going to take a little while to pump this full quart into there not too much came out of here so i'm sure it's probably uh, less than a quart currently the workshop manual doesn't even have a spec for the fill capacity of this of this PTU, but we'll find out here in a minute. These vehicles are so new. So keep pumping it into there and filling it up till it starts pouring out. So you can see right there, it's starting to drain out of there. You want to pump some more in there, though, and really make sure it's coming out and not just splash back. So we'll go ahead and pull our hose out at this point. It's stuck in the threads. Uh, I'm still not happy with that. I am going to really make sure this thing's full because there's like an actuator right inside of there, and you want to make sure it's full in the end. Either way, we're gonna overfill it like this and we're gonna let it drain out. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the whole quart inside of there. Now we're starting to get a more consistent flow out of there and we know it's full. No question about it. So we'll get our hose out of here. And the other nice thing is, where it's dripping right now, it's coming right past the, the subframe on here, so we're not making a huge mess while it's leveling out. Seems they were really thinking when they were building these vehicles. Once the fluid has had a chance to level out and we're getting this inconsistent drip like this, we're good to go. We can put the fill plug back in. The sealant you want to use is the Permatex thread sealant. I'll link to it down below for you guys. And you just want to put a thin layer all the way around the plug, okay? And we're going to get up in there and we're going to put the plug in by hand. Now the torque spec on here is 133 inch pounds and then an additional 360 degrees 
on it, which I think is absolutely nuts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply just gonna snug it up and tighten it by hand. Remember, it's just a fill plug. We need to snug it down and that's it, okay? So we'll clean up any kind of mess in here. Like I said, it misses the subframe, it's great. And then I'm just gonna use my ratchet in my eight mil socket, and we're just simply gonna snug it up. You'll feel it starting to get tight, and you simply give a little more, and that's it. If you don't wanna crack the case, just snug it up. Let me go ahead and clean it up. There it is. So at this point, our fill plug's good to go. Our drain plug's good to go. We're fill the fluid. It's time to put the shield back on. And that is all there is to it. You want to change the fluid every 30,000 miles. Uh, this will save the PTU from self-destruction. I see it all the time on the older ones here. And with this one having both a fill and a drain plug, very easy to access. There's no reason to not get in there and change the fluid on there and maintain your vehicle. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.